Forestry isn't the only threat to water quality in these high status sites. Agriculture can result in pollution too, although in this part of Kerry, farming isn't intensive. Livestock simply graze among the semi-natural grasslands. Here on the Griffins farm, there are woodlands, pastures and two miles of river. The Griffins have signed up to work with the Kerry Life project, so they manage this farm in such a way that the river stays as healthy as can be. How are you, Aidan? That's better on you. How are you? Good. It's a grand morning. This is all right. No one fairness, sun is shining, so we won't be complaining. And what are you doing there now? Uh, Pre-placement of bales as part of the measures for the Kerry Life project. Okay. We place and bales in the summer, start of autumn for feeding the cows outside for the winter. And why would you do that? What difference does that make? Prevents rotting up the ground in the winter time, in and out consistently with a tractor. So. so it means if you've got the bales placed before, you're not having to come in with the tractor when the ground yeah. is wet? Yeah, when the ground is wet, yeah. Is there much that you've had to do differently since starting with this project? Um, fencing of the rivers, we fence along the streams. Uh, foot bridges for cows to cross the streams. Uh, prevents the cows from damaging the banks and stepping on the mussels inside the river. Would you have always been aware that they were there? I knew there was something there. You'd often see the, um, you know, the old shells and stuff, but other than that, I took no notice of it. And then what did you think of it when the project started up and people were telling you you've got something really special in this area? I was sceptical, you know. But like when they came down, they spoke about it to us and you know, we said we'd see what we can do to help. And apart from keeping the cattle out of the water, out of the streams, is there much else that you've done differently? We've installed water trucks, whereas before cows were drinking out of a stream or out of a river. I'm sure it is just over here. I said it was, we were questioning it at the start, like would the cows get used to it? But so far, they've been fairly good with, to us and they've been drinking away. And how many of these do you have in the farm? We have six of them on the farm in total. So how does this work? Okay, so I said if you just shove that there, yeah. You might have to give it a couple of pumps, but. So as they push this, the water yeah, comes up. The water that comes pipe. up, yeah. That is brilliant. And that's, that's, this doesn't need any electricity or anything, this is no, just a pump. No, cows do all the work. And did it take the cows long to learn how to use this? A bit. You know, like, they were used to drinking out of the river and out of the stream, so... Okay. It's a bit of a change for them, but yeah. once they got the hang of it, they were OK. And the pipe just goes down to the river? Yeah, pipes down to the river into the stream. It's very clever, it's very simple. Simple idea, yeah, and it works, things really good. In every water catchment in Ireland, the local authorities now have community water officers. They can support communities who want to take action to protect their rivers and lakes. Efforts like this are essential if we're to halt the decline of our most wonderful wild rivers and lakes, to ensure that we'll still have some pristine waters in another 30 years. If we value clean waters, we're going to have to change the way we do things. We know how. It's just a matter of deciding that this is important. The pearl mussel is telling us a story. It's up to us if we choose to listen. <laughs>